So renewable energy is tough in any country, but in the UK it is specifically very tough due to our energy system and our climate. So solar power is going to be the biggest energy, uh, the biggest energy technology this century, I think. But unfortunately for the UK, we're not very sunny. Um, and unfortunately, our energy requirements are largest in the winter time, and that's when solar output is very low. Luckily, we're an island nation and we have lots of wind, um, but the wind doesn't always blow. So we should have some wind, but we can't do it all. And the problem with going to 100% solar wind or 100% renewable energy, I call uh, a, a cold week in January. Um, and I plotted in the report, I plotted the combined wind and solar output for January 2017. And there were five days where there, there was one week where wind output was fantastic. It was about six gigawatts, about 10%, oh, about 10 of supply. And then it fell by a factor of six for the following five days. And so if we go heavily into a wind and solar uh, energy system, we have to think about how we back up or provide energy for that, that those five days when the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine. Now, you can do this. There are various options to do this. You can do it with storage. And what gets the most attention is battery technology. But battery technology is great for um, short bursts of energy, uh, meeting demand, spikes in demand, um, balancing the grid from day to day. But it is not good for storing large amount of energy and meeting uh, five days of, of low wind and solar output. Um, all our options are worth pursuing. So I say in the report that the government should look into large scale, long term storage. So hydroelectricity, heat storage, and compressed air storage. But unfortunately, these are geographically dependent. So there might be only a few sites around the country that are suitable for this large scale energy. And the scale of the energy required is enormous. Um, in battery terms, I calculated that it would be uh, around 200 million Tesla power walls. It would be hundreds of pumped hydro storage systems. So the scale is actually enormous. An alternative to, sto to storage is backup power. So you can have gas turbines are powered by fossil fuels or by biomass. But again, you would need hundreds of these dotted around the country and they would mostly not be used. So that's a very inefficient way to run an energy system. So with all these problems of going 100% renewable energy, you have a very inefficient energy system. So it helps to have some firm power in the form of nuclear energy. But as you'll see, in, as you will have seen in the news, large nuclear is not going very well. Large nuclear energy companies have gone bankrupt and they're struggling to build nuclear power plants on time and to budget. And another problem is that nuclear power plants have gotten so large over time that they've become very expensive. So an individual nuclear power plant can be 10 billion pounds. So single companies are, are no longer able to finance individual big nuclear power plants. And this is where small modular nuclear reactors can play a big role. So the idea with small modular nuclear reactors is that you don't build them on site. They're smaller and you can build them in a factory. You put them on a truck and deliver them to the site ready to be plugged into the grid. By doing this, you can bring down costs through a process known as learning by doing or technological learning. And the, the first plant might not be cheaper than a large plant, but over time, if you build one, two, three, four, you'll get learning, learning by doing through better manufacturing processes. In summary, 100% renewable energy for the UK is incredibly difficult, maybe even impossible. So we really need nuclear power and small modular nuclear reactors can play a huge role in our energy system.